Okay, so we're going to talk about X49 and um, specifically with the LifeWave X49 patch and how it suppo supports bone and muscle health in women ages 40 to 80 was this clinical study. So we're going to look at the bone, bone density component of that. So we're going to talk about the different metabolic implications of wearing this patch um, versus the X40 and X39 patch over a period of eight weeks. So we can see studies using them individually. And you heard Dr. Harmon talk about how that helps X39 helps with bone. But we also can look at them together as well, too. And so uh, those studies, of course, you know, start x39now.com. You will definitely be able to see all of these studies in depth on that um, website. So we're going to talk about uh, the changes in AHKCU peptide levels. Okay, that's a different peptide from GHKCU. It is a daughter peptide, which is why these two patches work so well synergistically together. Um, we're going to talk about the hydroxyproline and the NTX levels as they relate to improved bone density. So in order to understand this process, we must first understand what collagen is and what holds it together and what NTX and AK, AHKCU are. So collagen is like the glue that holds your body together. Basically, we know that you have plenty of collagen up until about age 18 to 20-ish, and then we start to see that decrease in the collagen production in your body. So unless you're doing something to help increase your collagen production, then you're going to find that um, your, things are going to start to break down. But we're going to specifically look at uh, these amino acids. So we're going to look at glycine, which is on the top left. It's an amino acid. It acts as a neurotransmitter. It's obviously a component of the collagen. Uh, we're going to look at the hydroxyproline, of course, which is as well an amino acid and a little bit more in depth with it. And proline, which is amino acid that is required for the biosynthesis of collagen in your body. So all this to say, if you look down this graph, looking at the sequence and the, the amino acids and what's happening, we're going to talk about our collagen fibers. And basically, uh, the hydroxyproline is being one of the components, one of the amino acid sequences. And if the collagen breaks down into the individual, then the components are going to be more prevalent in the blood. So we want to really look at that and what that is, what, how that's happening with collagen, okay? So again, collagen holds basically the glue that holds things together. So we're looking at the five most common types with your bone, your skin. Car type two is cartilage. We look at connective tissue, uh, baseline membranes. And of course, it's most commonly known with your estheticians for the hair, skin, and nails, right? The face, what, what they're doing there in the office. But the structure of the bone is made of collagen. And the ossification process or the bone formation um, starts with this, with the cartilage, okay? And so the next screen, when we look at what happens when collagen breaks down in the bone, we're either going to take some bone or add some bone. So there's a constant give and take from our bones. Bones added if we exercise regularly, hopefully, you hear us talk about this all the time as part of a, of a healthy lifestyle is to get moving, whether it's put a YouTube video on and do something in your house, uh, body weight exercises, go for a walk. You know, you heard Dr. Harmon talk about running 40 to 50 miles a week. That is impressive, very impressive skiing, which can be dangerous, obviously, <laughs> but uh, still a lot of great exercise. So bone is taken when we are inactive. And also, if we don't consume enough calcium, and so I want you to Google calcium, types of foods that are rich in calcium. A lot of times we think of drinking milk, and I personally feel like there are much better sources to get your calcium. So looking at, you know, your green leafy vegetables, your seeds and your nuts, you know, those types of things, maybe some hard cheeses if you're, if you're consuming, you know, dairy or, you know, chickpeas or something like that to get your calcium. So let's look at collagen. Okay, so collagen, when we look at the collagen, like it looks like a braid, right? But we look at the denaturation process, and this happens in the stomach. 
So this is required for proteins because they need to be digested. So the denaturation process of this is basically it's modifying the molecular structure, deactivating or untangling the college the collagen, okay? When we see those wavy lines, right, that, that gelatin, that kind of like protein or antioxidant that's going to protect the cells and in, in the body, we really start to see this, this process coming from that of, um, it's called hydrolysis. And so when we look at the um, gelatin hy hydrolysis process, it's basically a water reaction. So it's breaking into pieces peptides. Right. Remember, collagen is, is different types of protein sources. And so peptides are, are chains of proteins of amino acids. So that is uh, where we see the end up of the peptides down there. So then we're going to look at the type 1 collagen crosslink. So here's where the study comes in to play and where you can really um, and I'm going to finish up, obviously, with the, the deep dive into what happened with that. But basically, when you look at the NTX, the N-terminal telepeptide, that NTX on the left side, that is released when collagen is breaking down. So there is more in the bloodstream when osteoclasts are active and someone is losing bone density. So that may be like way over your head, it may be a lot or it may make perfect sense, but basically the NTX is going to connect to strands of collagen. You saw the strands of collagen, right? When the collagen is destroyed, there'll be more of this in the blood. So there's an increase in NTX or the N-terminal telepeptide during bone loss. And so then there's this buildup phase there's a decrease in AHKCU copper peptide. So why is there less of the AHKCU? Well, because it's needed in the process of building bone. So the blood levels of the hydroxyproline goes up when bone is being lost. This, this study was done by measuring the blood, correct? So we can, we can see that. And so in the study, the levels of the hydroxyproline went down. So we're always in a constant state of change in our body. That's a given. <laughs> at any second, right, there are trillions of things happening. So when you look at AHKCU, there's less AHKCU peptide in the blood during the osteoblastic activity. So osteoblastic activity is where the cell secretes a matrix for bone formation. Okay, and so then the NTX, there is more NTX in the blood during osteoclastic activity, and that's when the bone cell absorbs bone tissue during the growth and healing. So we're seeing an increase in bone density and losing bone density. So when we look at the hydroxyproline, there is more in the blood during that osteoclastic activity decreasing bone density. Now, here's the results of the study. And again, you can see the study on startx39.com, startx39now.com, just as you can the others. But basically, there's a decrease in the AHKCU and decrease in NTX. There was a decrease in the hydroxyproline. So they strongly suggest that the X49 decreases the breakdown of bones. So less AHK suggesting more bone production. So X49 increases net bone production. And there was less NTX suggesting less bone breakdown. There's less hydroxyproline suggesting less bone breakdown. So that's very important. You want to keep the bone you have and you want to increase your bone density. Obviously, we talked about um, exercise. We talked about food. Nutrition is important, but it's also important using the X49 as well because of what we found in our clinical studies to help increase that bone density and reduce the amount of bone loss in layman's terms. <laughs>